The Scarlet Claw from 1944 was a murder mystery thriller based on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes character. And it starred Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce. This was a great film. And thanks to my friend Indigenous Bert for this recommendation and also the channel Five Bags of Popcorn that also recommended this one. It was a great film. And I'll give an overview of the movie and then give some closing thoughts. Well, the film opens up and we have Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. They are in Canada at an occult conference when one of the characters there, a Lord Penrose, played by actor Paul Cavanaugh, who I caught not too long ago in the film House of Wax with Vincent Price. Well, he gets a word that his wife, Lady Penrose, has been murdered. So Sherlock Holmes and Watson are about to leave for home when they get a telegram from this Lady Penrose that she had sent before she had been murdered, asking for help. And Holmes says, we've been retained by a corpse. So Holmes and Watson go to Penrose Manor, but they receive a very cold reception there from Lord Penrose. They do manage to sneak in and do a quick examination of the body before being forced to leave. And they check into some local lodging so they can continue their investigation. Now it's here that the girl at the counter, Marie, played by actress Kay Harding, helps them out. We see she's been crying as apparently she has been mistreated by her father, the innkeeper, Jernette. They speak to him, a little suspicious of him. And in speculating about the murder, they suggest that maybe he was the killer and he had used a garden weeder as an instrument of the killing, but of course he denies it. Holmes tells Watson to go to like this local pub and blend in with some of the locals, but be inconspicuous. And what follows is of course a silly scene as Watson walks around and the locals are all just kind of staring at him as an outsider. And uh, he does manage to overhear a character named Potts played by actor Gerald Hammer, who is this very bright and colorful guy. He's talking away about how this is the handiwork of the supernatural. So Watson, you know, has a seat with him and they start talking together. And in the course of their conversation, they both get completely wasted. So Watson scenes, we can tell are more for silliness here, but they do establish that these locals are afraid of something that is lurking in the marshes, but we don't know what it is, some sort of creature. Holmes, meanwhile, has gone to meet with the police sergeant, and he plans to go out and explore the marshes himself. And as he does so, it's dark and spooky. We hear the ringing of a church bell, and there's some just great suspenseful music and eerie atmosphere as he goes looking around investigating. Now, suddenly there's this eerie glowing figure that runs towards him, and it's kind of a neat special effect for 1944, I thought. And Holmes grabs his gun and takes a few shots at this mysterious creature. I mean, he gets about four shots fired. He misses completely. But as the creature flees, Holmes finds a scrap of this glowing fabric from its body on a tree. Now, Watson and some of the other characters had gone to look for Holmes. And Watson, you know, being a silly fellow, had managed to fall into a bog. So they bring him back home and the poor guy is all, you know, sick now. You know, again, he's, he's a comic relief, but it's all fun. And Holmes, of course... He's not convinced that this is the work of a monster in the bog, but it's somebody wearing this glowing outfit that's covered with phosphorus. Now, Holmes learns that this is part of an expensive shirt that had been purchased earlier by a retired judge whom he goes to visit. And Judge Bryson, played by actor Miles Mander, is this grumpy old guy. He's in a wheelchair. He's got a shotgun and a German shepherd. He doesn't want to be bothered. Now, Holmes and Watson, they do visit him. And the servant reluctantly lets them in. But this judge, he's got the gun aimed at Holmes and tells him to leave. Holmes says that he can help save this guy's life, but he doesn't care. So on the way out, we see that Holmes accidentally drops an envelope and they leave. Now the judge gets up from his chair, walks over to get the envelope, right as Holmes returns. You're not the cripple you pretend to be, he says. And well, the judge's tone changes. He lets him come in to sit down. And he discusses with him how he lives in fear of this monster. The judge tells Holmes that he had a servant give some of his old shirts to a boatman character. So off Holmes and Watson go to find this boatman, character Jack Tanner. They do manage to find him. They encounter him briefly. He's this, you know, big bearded guy. And they also notice he's got the glowing outfit hanging up nearby. Now, Holmes accuses this guy of being the murderer, but before they can get the sergeant to grab him, the 
This guy just dashes out a window and runs away along a rooftop and then does this amazing dive out into the water in the process. Holmes looks around and discovers a fragment of a photograph that gives him another clue. The clue leads Holmes back to the Penrose estate and he is able to piece Tanner's piece of the picture together with one that was owned previously by Lady Penrose. Now Lord Penrose appears with a gun and demands to know what's going on and Holmes shows him the connected picture. We find out that Lady Penrose had retired from acting after seeing another actor killed by an actor, Alastair Ramson. Now Lord Penrose tells Holmes that they believe Ramson had been killed in a prison break. Holmes, though, deduces that Tanner and Ramson are the same person and that this guy may be blending in as someone in the local village. Holmes soon learns that Judge Bryson was the one who had sentenced this character, Ramson. So he hurries over, but it's too late. It appears from the shadows that his maid has crept up and stabbed and killed him. So Holmes finally arrives and finds the judge murdered and his maid, Nora, has been tied up. And she had no idea who it was who had committed this crime. Somebody had dressed up as the maid and murdered the judge. So Holmes returns to the boarding house from earlier and he's able to find the character Ramson. But Ramson has a gun drawn to kill him. Now note, at this point, we never actually see his face. It's all in the shadows. And he's about to reveal the name of his next victim when a bumbling Watson outside startles them by making a noise. So there's an escape and Ramson gets away. Now Holmes has figured out that the next victim is likely to be this Jeanette character, the innkeeper. So they head back, but they discover they're too late and that Marie, his daughter, has actually been the one killed. Holmes goes and finds a judge with a plan to put an end to everything. And with only a few minutes left of this film, I'll let you see the exciting conclusion for yourself. So just some closing thoughts about The Scarlet Claw. This was directed by Roy William Neal and was the sixth in a series of 12 Sherlock Holmes films that Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce made for Universal. It's not actually based on any story by Arthur Conan Doyle, although there are themes of Hound of the Baskervilles kind of worked into this film. I have heard it referred from several people as the best of the series and in different reviews and so on. The working title of this film was Sherlock Holmes in Canada, which makes sense as the film was set in a small village near Quebec City. It was interesting too that Universal decided to sort of update Holmes to the 1940s. So it's a little more modern, I suppose, with electricity and automobiles and whatnot, but it still does feel like it could have just as easily been in the late 19th century. Now, this is the first Sherlock Holmes film that I've reviewed for this channel, and I thought that Basil Rathbone was fantastic. So far, most of what I've seen him in is basically that of the sinister villain, such as, you know, from The Adventures of Robin Hood or The Mark of Zorro. I think he's excellent when he plays the bad guy, but, you know, here is Holmes. He just seems a perfect fit for the role. He's cool. He's logical. He's driven to his investigations. It's everything you'd expect from the character. But even though he seems, you know, detached and focused on his work, we do see that he has an emotional side as well, such as when he laments finding the character Marie who has been murdered and there was nothing he could do about it. I just thought he was an excellent actor. He's really got me wanting to watch more movies in this series. And of course, Nigel Bruce was excellent as Dr. Watson. I've seen him in other non-Holmes films like The Two Mrs. Carrolls with Humphrey Bogart. And even there, you know, he's got this very jovial, likable character to him. And true, maybe his silliness was a little much in The Scarlet Claw, but I liked it. I like the balance he brings, kind of the silliness to go with the seriousness of Holmes. Gerald Hammer was a colorful character in this film who actually appeared in four other films of the Sherlock Holmes series. So I'll have to look for him again. Now, if Internet Movie Database is to be believed, there have been around 350 different actors to play Sherlock Holmes over the years, including many huge names like you know, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Christopher Plummer, and far too many films I I've honestly never seen. It's really impressive. Now, growing up, I do remember Jeremy Brett's rendition of Holmes on PBS. And I'll be honest, I've not really seen any of the newer incarnation of Holmes, such as with Robert Downey Jr. or the Doctor Strange guy, what's his name, Benadryl, Cucumber Patch. But as my three fans know at this point, I've given the choice of films 
I'm going to go watching films from 80 years ago, more than modern stuff. Maybe I'll get to them someday. By the way, if you do what I do when you watch a movie and you've got the Internet Movie Database app opened on your phone to kind of cross-reference where you've seen old actors, well, if you haven't seen this film yet, then don't do this <laughs> because when researching this film while I was watching it, I discovered there's a major spoiler when you look at the cast and crew page. I'll just leave it at that, but it effectively ruins the surprise of the film. So just be aware. If you do that type of thing like I do, where you think, oh yeah, where do I know this actor from? Oh, uh, yeah, I just ruined the film. So just be forewarned. Anyhow, that's The Scarlet Claw from 1944. Really enjoyed this one. It was a very entertaining Sherlock Holmes mystery. And I really thought Basil Rathbone was fantastic here. It's a great film worth checking out.